Welcome back to Talk Here with Dr. Laz, your favorite health program on television. Yes, you're joining me via Zoom from Lagos, Nigeria, uh, are Ms. Ayo, uh, Ayomide Oni, who is a friend to late Omolara Omoya. You're welcome to the program, Ayomide. Thank you very much, Dr. Hello, Ayomide, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, Thank welcome you, to the program. Also, uh, Joining from Zoom in Lagos is also a friend to Omolara, uh, Mr. Olushegun Oloronikpa. You're welcome to the program. Yeah, thank you, Doctor. Thank you very much. Uh, both of you, uh, you know, made posts on social media. I, I, I recall uh, Ayomide made the first post that, that went viral. Then later I saw your video, uh, Mr. Shegun, uh, about the unfortunate incident that happened to your friend. Let me start with you, uh, Ayo. Uh, you accompanied uh, Omolara to the hospital. Can you briefly explain uh, what happened? Okay, thank you, Doctor. Omolara had already called me that she had gone to the hospital and she had gotten back. She was treated for malaria, even though she had made complaints about her ulcer. So she said that she wasn't feeling better and that when she got home, she began to have difficulty in breathing. So I hurried up to her place. I took her back because she wasn't feeling better and she had vomited almost everywhere in the house. When we got back to the hospital, the doctor said he was going to admit her. So I took, I went back to her house. I went to take stuff that would be needed since we'll be passing the night at the hospital. When I got back to the hospital, she was already in a ward that was on the second floor. Um, I found out that she was being administered some injections too. And um, there was a device that was placed on her tongue. So they asked me to check on that device from time to time and raise an alarm when the device reads 19. So um, before the nurses even left and the doctors, she had already made a complaint very obvious that she's not breathing well and then she cannot lie down. They were trying to ask her to lie down so that they will give her the injection um, via her veins. But she said she couldn't lie down properly. Um, from time to time, I noticed that she was not getting well. So I was reaching out to the nurses going from floor to floor. And at some point, the device stopped working. So I took it along with me down like to the next floor before us. So I gave it to the nurse and then I made a complaint again that she's not feeling better and she's not even resting, like she's not lying down. Before I got back to the ward, she was already seated where I was sitting watching her. And she claimed that that's what that's what she that's the position that she prefers. As she at that time she was not talking anymore. She was just giving sign languages and all that. So I reached out to the nurses again. Then the one nurse came and said that um, the injection she's about to give her is going to make her relax, that she's going to calm down, she's going to relax, and then she's going to sleep off. So she was giving that injection. And um, after a while, she lied down, but then her breathing even became worse, and she could not talk. Her eyes were half open. Her mouth was open as she was breathing through her, through her mouth and the breathing was very deep, like she was gasping for it was very obvious and she was making sounds. Another doctor came in after a while and said that um, her condition is critical and that uh, maybe the doctor raised an alarm and like suggested new ways to handling her mm. and doctor said they should bring oxygen. There was reluctance in getting the oxygen but well, I tried to pull, I, I put effort and then the oxygen was brought. I carried the oxygen at some point and then she was given oxygen. Not too long, they switched the oxygen source from um, a short white vacuum to a cylinder. So they checked her BP and they started to ask me questions like, does she have asthma? Does she smoke? Does she have any underlying health issue? So I was like, well, you should have asked her all these things before even treating her. Then they asked me to reach out to her family. At that time, it was the one or past, but thereabouts, but it was already midnight. So That's I- 1 a.m., right? Yes, 1 a.m., it was already midnight. 
I reached out to the family and we, I tried to ask them questions, but to no avail. At that point, the members of our family that I reached out to were already panicking. So I tried to calm them down. So what, what do you mean to, to no avail? Did you ask questions and they didn't respond? They did respond. They responded. But okay. it seemed like the doctors were trying to get a, an answer from them. Maybe like a kind of negative answer. Hmm. Because the sister claimed that Tomlara had, gone, had come over to her at Abuja for a medical checkup. And then the results was given to her. And then she was rescheduled for another appointment the next month. But she had to travel down to Lagos. But they kept on asking that what was the result of the test or the scan that she went for. And the result was that she had ulcer. That was the first time that they detected her ulcer. And that was years ago, not even this year. Okay, not even so last she's year. a non-peptic ulcer disease patient. Yeah. Yes. What yes. was your relationship with her? She's my very close friend. She's my best friend. Okay. For how many years have you been very close? We've been very close for like two years now. Okay. So sorry about your loss, uh, Ayomide. So um, at what point was referral made to Lasuth? Referral was made like as that. They it, it was not even an official referral. They just told me that I needed to get her out of that place. That I needed to take her to Lasuth. And we asked why. In fact, um, I tried to call her brother. The brother said that maybe because of distance, we should try and get another hospital in Arepo. That's where she stays. Okay. But they said that then there's no point getting another hospital around there. That she needed experts, experts something like care. she needed. Okay, yeah, so was like there an ambulance that you used to move to last week? They didn't provide any ambulance. In fact, I, I said that I was going to wait because of the time. They said mm. I said I was going to wait maybe for their own ambulance. I even asked them. What time will the ambulance be ready? They made a phone call and then they said very early the next morning. So I said I was going to wait and they tried to discourage me, saying that the oxygen will not last up to three hours. Mm. Okay. All right. So let's, uh, uh, thanks for that account. Let's get to uh, Mr. Shegun. Um, you, you made a video uh, where you explained, uh, you know, it was a very emotional video. Uh, but from the point you learned that, uh, Omolara died. What had happened uh, between then and now, especially in your engagement with the, has the hospital made any statement? We've tried to get across to the hospital. That has not been successful, but can you give us uh, quickly within a couple of minutes what it has been since this story went out? Okay, thank you, doctor. So um, I heard about her passing on Friday. Um, she passed on Thursday morning, early hours of Thursday, on Friday, I came about it. Unfortunately, um, she had been buried that, that same Thursday. Um, and and it, it gave me so much worry. But then I said, okay, I'm just going to make a move. So I reached out to Ayo. Um, and then I went to pick Ayo myself and my PA, and then we drove down to, and some of our friends, we drove down to the hospital. I, I knew the first place to go was the hospital, to go and even find out from them what actually happened. So we get to the hospital. Fortunately, the MD was on seat, and then they, they told told him we're around. So he, they invited us to his office. Um, obviously, he didn't even know until that particular point that Omolara had passed. You know, it was when we when they told him that we were outside that they brought the laptop to him and the report, and he quickly, you know, went through it. It was so obvious. It was he was fidgeting, he was shaking. He didn't. So I said, Doctor, are you not aware? He said he only referred that he called in at about 12.31 and he said anything that has to do with um, breathing that they should please refer, that that was what he, he, he instructed. And I said, are you also aware that ambulance wasn't provided? He couldn't say anything. I said, are you also aware that oxygen was removed from her when they got to the car, from upstairs to the car? He wasn't aware. So it wasn't even the report. So when we came in, he was showing us what the that, that he is aware that she had been like their patient over over time since 2019 and that when he she came this this were the drugs they prescribed described he was showing us on the laptop and these were the drugs they administered and all of that mm. and that when when they called and said it was breathing issue he, he just referred and I said well your people removed the oxygen from her nose and then she didn't make it to last week 
he didn't know. The doctor, he did not know. So he was now he was now confused. He now started apologizing and saying he's sorry uh, that he's not he's not he's not happy how everything was handled. He acknowledged that he messed up. So we okay. said, okay, no problem. We're going to take it off. I took his call card and then I left. So I reached out to my lawyer, sent everything, all the proof and all that to my lawyer. Mm. And then my lawyer said we should just give it time. And let's see what what we have. Okay. Um, so, uh, Mr. Lauren Nipas, uh, sorry I'm cutting you. Uh, we, you know, we have to really funny. manage our time. Uh, uh, my last okay. question to you, do you know if there was an autopsy before uh, your friend Omolara was buried? Um, unfortunately, I'm not aware because I didn't know when she was buried. So I'm okay. still trying to reach out to, to the family members that were there to find out. But then uh, the FCC... Uh, PC already reached out to us too, you know, um, telling us their interest, the federal government's interest in the case, and they, they want some summon for, they want us to produce some summon so that they can start investigation. So that's, that's it. So. Okay. So what about Lagos State's government authorities? Has there been any action on that end? I only saw it um, in newspaper that uh, Lagos State is interested in the case, but as far as I'm concerned, they don't reach out to either of your video myself. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Shego and Lauren Ipa and uh, Ms. Uh, Ayomide Oni. Thanks for joining us on the program. I'm so sorry about the loss of your friend, Omolara. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you for having us, Doctor. Pleasure. Thank you. So, you heard them. We are going to take a break. And when we return, uh, my guest in the studio, I'll be introducing them after the break, uh, will now have to analyze the situation. Do stay with us and we'll be right back. Mm -hmm.